Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Manu Matlavi, back with another video. Today we'll be talking about the will of God. And our main scripture reading is from Romans chapter 12 verse 2. And I'm pretty sure we all know it. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that you may prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Okay, the order is wrong. So that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Those are the three categories we have of the will of God. The good, acceptable, or permissive, and perfect will of God. And in this video, I'll be going into all three and explaining what each is. Starting with the good will of God. Every will of God is good. God can never will evil. His will is always good. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if we as people perceive the will of God as not good. God's will is always good. The Bible says he's upright and in him there is no unrighteousness. In him there is no evil. So God's will will always be good. It doesn't matter what it is. It will always be good. God's will is good. He can never do anything unjust. The Bible says that in him there is no darkness, right? So everything that God does or everything that God wills will always be good. So that is the good will of God. The perfect will of God. Um, in the order of the scripture that we were reading in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it goes good, acceptable, then perfect. But I'd like to start with perfect because it just makes more sense that way. Okay. The perfect will of God is God's grand design for you, God's blueprint for your life. Everything that He said, like everything that He has planned that you will do, and everything that He has planned that you will go through. So um, it's basically the blueprint of your life who you will marry what school you will go to who your parents will be it's written in god's perfect plan for your life a scripture reading that i can link um the perfect will of god with is jeremiah 29 11 which i'm pretty sure we all know because um, we have it in our bios we have it on our notepads and stuff so um jeremiah 29 11 says i know the plans i have towards you says the lord plans to give you a hope and a future and the king james it says i know the thoughts i have told you said the lord thoughts of peace and not evil and of an expected end so that is what the perfect will of god is god's design for your life everything planned out for your life and walking in god's perfect will ensures absolute victory because you're basically walking in what god has planned for you so everything you know it's just it's just easy it's easier that way it's it's safer it's safer to walk in god's perfect will for your life um and just take every decision that he wants you to take what is the permissive will of God slash the acceptable will of God is something kind of different but not too different so let's say you're walking in God's perfect will and you're like mm, you know this one in God's current design I'm not really liking it okay I don't like it as much Lord can we change just this one detail about my life and then he agrees then you start walking in God's acceptable or permissive will. An example in scripture where we see the permissive will of God is with King Hezekiah. Hezekiah was about to die and the Lord sent the prophet Isaiah to go and tell him, you're going to die, you, you're not going to be, he was sick. He was like, mm -mm. you are going to die, you will not heal. You are just going to die. It's over. Your life has stopped to an end. And Hezekiah, when Hezekiah heard this, he was really sad. And as Isaiah was leaving, he faced the wall. Hezekiah faced the wall and started praying and pleading to God and told God, Lord, remember your servant that I've served you, Lord, with a pure heart, with an upright heart. You know, Lord, remember, remember, Lord, remember. He was pleading with God and was crying very bitterly. And then the Lord, um, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Isaiah again while he was like on the way and it's like no turn around go and tell him that no it's fine i'll add 15 years to his life then isaiah went back and told Hezekiah that okay fine 
15 more years you're going to live a little bit more okay you're not gonna die i'll heal you it's fine you will live longer so what we see there is that according to the design or how things were supposed to happen hezekiah was supposed to die then but because he pleaded with god and said lord the works that I've, I've done i've served you with a pure heart then god was like okay cool it's fine i'll add more years to your life so that's the permissive will of god he allowed something that was not in his grand design he allowed it to happen because he's god and he's so loving and so kind and if you just like because he's a father man and you approach him with a heart that is sincere he can give you what you desire Another example that we have from scripture, which is very interesting, honestly, is with Abraham, where he pleaded with God. Um, he went to God and said, Lord, because God was about to destroy Sodom, right? He said, Lord, if there are 50, let's say there are 50 people in Sodom that are righteous, will, it, will you really destroy the righteous with the unrighteous? Be it far from you, Lord. That's what he said. He said, be it far from you, Lord, to destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. And the Lord was like, if there be 50 in the land um, that are righteous, I will not destroy um, the righteous with the righteous for the sake of the 50. Then Abraham was like, okay. He said 50. What about 45? And the Lord answered the same way. For the sake of the 45. Okay. And he's like, what about 40? <laughs> then the Lord said, even if there are 40 people as well, okay, fine, I will not destroy for the sake of the 40. Then he's like, 30? <laughs> then God said, okay, if there are 30, I will not destroy for the sake of 30. 20. Then he said 10. So he was basically interceding because his nephew Lot was in Sodom. So he was interceding that the Lord should not destroy the entire Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot there who's righteous. So um, as a result, what God did, he took out Lot and his family and then destroyed Sodom. Because of the interceding of Abraham and just pleading with God, God was like, okay, it's fine. I'll take out the righteous and then destroy just the evil. I will not destroy the evil with the righteous. If he hadn't prayed, I actually think that God would have just destroyed the entire, you know, because it's God and he's powerful and he's mighty. So that's what permissive will does. You ask and you plead with God, Lord, you said, if I ask, you shall give me the desires of my heart. I do not want to study medicine. I want to be in media studies. And God is like, okay, that is not what I planned for you, but since you're pleading so much, it's fine. You can have it. A good way of pleading with God is using his word. Is using his word. He can never turn away from his word. He said, Lord, you said in your word that I should ask in the name of Jesus and it will be done for me. And you, Lord, I ask. So that is what the premise of will of God is. You ask and you plead with God and he grants you. I hope that makes sense and it brought clarity to those three categories that I talked about of the will of God. The good will of God, the acceptable will of God and the perfect will of God. If you really enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like the video, subscribe to my channel and catch me again right here on Nolo Mkavi with a different topic.